I've seen various methods suggested for holding these washers in place while you're putting the front on the camera, including putting in short stubs of screws, headless screws, or pieces of toothpick, or various other dodgy methods. But in practice, I have found that uh, you don't need to do things like that. What we've got to do now is fit the front on the camera. Now the top edge of the this piece of brass here has to fit under that chrome trim. And what we're trying to do is get this gear here aligned correctly, correct, correctly timed with this gear here. Our shutter release lever here has to come in underneath the bottom piece here. It's all possible, it's just um, a bit fiddly. And I'm not getting my transfer shaft dropping into place there. Now it's starting to feel a bit positive. Let's check my stack of uh, spacer washers again. Sometimes this will just about drop in with no fighting at all. That's all but in. Right. I've got four screws that hold this front in place. Under normal circumstances, three of these will have glue on them and one will be clean because one came from out of this hole here. The other three were underneath the glue layer. I'll pop two in at the top. I'm just starting that screw. I just want to make sure that I don't lose my spacer washers. This is a bit more difficult because you're working down inside that hole. Those screws are just started and no more. Now I felt the transfer shaft drop in then, but it obviously dropped in a tooth or two too late. So it's not coupling correctly. So I'll have to have another go at that. So I just have to reverse what I've just done. Slacken off and remove my four screws. Lift the front off, hopefully without disturbing our spacer washers. And try again. Sometimes this will work and you'll get a good result on the first attempt. Um, I would say on average you would need Probably two attempts would be 
the average number of attempts you're going to have to make and that's when things are going well it's always possible things are not going well in which case you'll be using doing it making even more attempts all right let's get that screw back out of there those washers are trying to get away but they're still basically sitting in place so that's good I've got a tiny smear of uh, synthetic grease where that gear couples in oh, the, oh I see the teeth there a little bit marked now obviously someone's um, had a go at this camera before and they've sort of forced that gear and so those, those teeth are probably a bit reluctant to couple correctly that's interesting and I didn't mention it but you always do this with the shutter uncocked you don't want to be trying to fight this into place with the shutter cocked I'm holding that down it's in place but we're at least a tooth out I'm going to cheat I'll show you how we can cheat see if my washers haven't shifted they have No, I'm going to have to lift it off because the washers have moved and I can't get the screw down in there. Yeah, see? Now the washer has shifted again at this position. Hang on, that might be it. That feels possible. Let's try again. I'm just going to start all of these screws I don't think our gear is engaged at the top now it is Let's see. Success. The shutter fires. That's good. I'll just take that off the B setting and we'll try the self timer. 
if the timing is out one tooth the wrong way, it'll cock it too far. The mechanism can't roll back far enough to set the self timer. So we're going to try the self timer, cock the shutter, set the self timer. Why is that running down? I haven't released it yet. No, oh, we're on number one. That's why we're not cocking anything. Try that again. That's better. Self time is running down. That's a good sign. The shutter fires. What's locked there? Oh, the film. Okay. Okay, so we've got an adjustment problem there. You can set the shutter off like this by pressing the shutter release very gently. You can get the shutter to fire without releasing the film advance because that screw needs to be backed up on that shaft so that it gets pressed down a little bit sooner. That's good. Well basically this is looking very positive at the moment. I won't tighten up these screws on the front anymore. They're quite secure, they'll hold things in place. We'll see if we can get our timing better for the shutter release. Yeah, I can, feel, I can hear that um, film release pop back up there. means it's right on the edge of catching. So, let's uh, get the adjustments right for our film release. That release lever, make sure it's working correctly. So I'm going to take this top off. Now, our adjustment screw, you can see it from the back easier here is down in here so that you can only get at it with a small screwdriver coming in at an oblique angle through at this point so I know what I need to achieve I need to bring that screw up slightly so I need to unscrew it so I'll just bring it up about three quarters of a turn That seems to do it. Yep, that's good. That's working exactly as it should now. I'll put the top back on the camera here because I don't want to disturb the meter now that we've got it. We've got everything coupled up. And we've got more work to do with the meter because although we've got the drum in at the base of the camera we haven't got the front rings on the shutter and the front rings on the shutter couple to that mechanism more componentry what do we need We need a coupling pinion here and the gear and then the front rings from the front of the shutter. I'll need to find them. Well these components will need to be cleaned so I will start that. I'll start with the front ring here and you can see it immediately there's a lot of red paint coming off there that's where the screw was marked at the front that might not even be paint it could even be red wax um, that would be a possibility somebody may have filled that hole with wax anyway whatever it is it's spreading out quite nicely and that aluminium now looks pink instead of silver so I'll need to get rid of that rubbish get our aluminium nice and sparkly again, it's certainly got a pink tinge this 
this is by no means as important with the, ref the Retina 3S as it would be if this was a Reflex S. With a Reflex S it's very important that all the front rings work as they should otherwise you may find that you don't get the diaphragm snapping down correctly or for that matter you might not even get the shutter to cock correctly if the control rings are bound up that appears to be good and the aperture ring This aperture ring has a uh, return spring to help return it to the neutral position. Interestingly, on the Bessomatics, Voigtlander Bessomatics, which use the very similar shutter to this, they don't have that spring, they lack it completely. Uh, they appear to work completely normally. This brass component um, can cause problems you get if it's oxidised to any degree. This one isn't, but sometimes you'll find them that they're a bit oxidised. The surface is then rough, and if the surface is a little bit rough, then the rings don't roll on it smoothly. This little gear here couples the shutter speed and the aperture setting together so that they counter rotate. And this piece is the shutter speed setting ring. Be careful with these plastic setting knobs on here, they're um, sometimes cracked, uh, they can certainly then screws loose on that one, I'm just checking those screws. If you have a loose screw then it means that all the loads taken on one end or the other and they will end up cracking and falling to bits, that feels good. And we have the return spring, which fits on this post here. And I'll see if I can get the end of it in place. That's it. The aperture setting ring goes on there next. I've got to hook this little hook here into the spring. Put a bit of tension on the spring and then the ring clips into place. There's a little tab on that ring. You pull it round far enough you can drop that into its slot. So that's all good. Just checking the action of that. It seems smooth enough. Sometimes if there's a little bit of roughness in the aluminium, a little bit of uh, molybdenum um, graphite powder in there worked in and then blown out can make a great deal of difference. I'm just going to rub a little bit of molybdenum around this brass component inside and out just to make sure that there's that it's going to roll smoothly and this goes on that little coupling gear couples with the teeth that you can see on the inside of that ring and this slot Get 
this in place. It's just jamming there, something up, it's not quite sitting right. No, something's not sitting correctly. It's that spring. That spring's not sitting down correctly. That's what that was. That's better. Let's drop down into position. Just checking the motion of that. You see as I move it, that gear revolves. That would counter rotate with the shutter speed dial. That seems good. Now this goes onto the camera. There's a little notch or a slot in the aluminium here. And the edge of this cutout in the brass lines up with that slot. That's where it's fitted back to the camera. Good, we've got those components. Before we do that, we've got to get our coupling pinion in. It couples to the meter. And these, that couples actually couples this speed ring to the meter drum. It's got the cable on it. So... A bit of molybdenum paste on here, particularly at the end because I've got to get that to feed into the slot in that drum. A bit up on the shaft. That's good. Now in an ideal world that would just drop in and align immediately with the slot in that drum. In practice it probably won't and there's a bit of fiddling around to be done. So that's it just dropped in. Our pinion that couples to that sits on there. Our shutter speed dial setting ring needs a bit of molybdenum paste down in this area. That's where it couples to the B to the lever for setting the speeds. And at this point, this is where that lever pops out to allow you to set the meter settings beyond B. So that sits there like that. That's good. That's for the shutter set to B. That's all as it should be. Our front rings, these are held together. We've got our notch in the aluminium against that bra cut in the brass there. This goes on the camera and it should drop into place and the shutter speed ring and the aperture settings ring should couple together. It, yeah, it's just dropping in. I'm just checking. That says B at F1.9. That's correct. It took a bit of a wriggle to get that to seat, but it is seated. Now that screw head. That was the one that had been painted red or what covered in red wax or something with red on it. I'm just going to clean that a little bit. I would say that that was probably a red wax the way it comes off with that particular solvent. That screw head's a little bit chewed up looking so it's ideal to be the one that gets painted because once it's painted all the chewed up marks are hidden. So that one can go in there. The other two screws 
which are in slightly better condition can go in those two positions check they're all in position nip those up if we turn the shutter speed ring you should see the aperture ring counter rotate with it that's all smooth that's B we turn our setting ring at the bottom of the camera we can move our aperture and meter at the same time of course move this round to another speed let's put it at an eighth that's good that's all working as it should I'm just checking to make sure that this the, these dials move all the way through their range so from B at f1.9 through to a 500th at f22 they do there's a little bit of reluctance at that point it might be because of my meter actually yeah it is that's just the meter at the end of its travel no that's fine so the dials are working correctly they're coupled they work smoothly There's screws at the front of the camera I'll just stop this for a second if the camera is complaining it's got a flat battery we'll keep going until it stops that screw is stripped out that's interesting alright that could cause me some problems I might have to find a larger diameter screw unless I can deal with that in some fashion it may be a damaged screw of course I'll have to find out alright well with the front all fixed in place I'm going to take the opportunity to paint the red dot on that screw head since that screw head is not a pretty example it'll look much better once it's been disguised with a bit of bright red paint so all the dials are back in place the shutter is working correctly all our settings appear good there I noticed that the settings dial there the numbers are a little bit dirty looking I'm just going to have a go at cleaning those with a bit of naphtha on a cotton bud see if I can get the red 4 to look like red that seems to be better and that the green numbers look like green not another shade of black that looks good so there's our shutter back on the camera and I think our next job here will be to deal with the I don't know whether to deal with the rangefinder next or to put the base plate on the camera I'll have a look at the base plate well of course that's very stained with adhesive so I'll have to clean that off and um, I'll be using all the solvents I can find to get that clean I would imagine I'll clean that and then that can go on and we'll get our full base plate back on the camera at the moment we've only got the shortened version there that I use for working on the camera and the rangefinder well I can see I haven't serviced this yet and that's particularly obvious because it's got a big fingerprint on the front of the uh, lens so I'll have to pull that apart and service that 
But first the base plate, I'll get that clean and I'll bring you back once that's ready to go. Oh by the way, that screw that was stripped out there, it was the screw that was damaged, not the body itself. And so putting a good screw on there sorted that problem out.